Hey guys, I'm gonna try something different today. I'm gonna talk to the camera. So, as some of you know, I've broken my leg. I had a pretty bad accident snowboarding in Japan. Fractured my leg in pretty nasty. Spent quite a few weeks in hospital, had a couple of operations. I'm home now, I'm on crutches, and I can't work on the car, so. What I thought I would do is just start doing a bunch of videos where I focus in on certain parts of the car. I'm gonna talk about how and why I did things, all the technical details that you probably can't get from a bunch of photos on Instagram. Hopefully this will be a series looking at all different parts of the build. And the first episode is gonna be just on the rear suspension, which is actually the first part of the car that I start and work on so yeah i hope you enjoy the video so i just want to start off by saying that i don't work in the car industry at all just basically self-taught been into cars pretty much since i got my license i don't know what 30 years ago or something so yeah i'm not telling people how to do things this is just how i did it as you can see the rear suspension is well it's pretty extreme i wanted this car to be something different than what I've done before. So I've, I've built other cars in the past with off the shelf parts and all that sort of stuff. But for this car, I wanted to do a ground up build. The main focus of the car, I mean, it's, it's a time attack build, doing it to world time attack pro am rules, just because I like the freedom of those rules. It allows me to create something pretty extreme without any restriction. I want the car to be lightweight. I want the center of gravity to be as low as possible and I want all the suspension geometry to be done right for the low ride height. As you can see the rear suspension is a full tube chassis integrated into the roll cage. It's not finished yet but it's probably about 80% of the way there. There's a few tubes to go in at a later date. The way this is done is I basically took the standard Subaru BRZ suspension cradle and I made a, a welding jig to locate all the pivot point and then I ensured that that jig would be able to bolt back into the original frame rails of the car. Once I had the jig built, it was a matter of putting together a tube frame that would hold the differential and all the suspension arms. They're all in the factory position with the exception of the trailing arm which has a little bit of a, an adjustment for the anti-squat properties so i think you can see that each control arm has a choice of three positions and that's basically just so i can do different ride heights and correct the geometry you know when you lower the car you don't want to ruin the, all your roll centers and everything so that just gives me a bit of adjustment there but basically i've built the car around a minimum ride height of 50 millimeters from what's going to be a flat floor and then the way I've got the, the welding jig to locate into the original frame rail is I actually mounted it on top of where it used to mount so that basically lifts all the suspension up inside the chassis basically lowers the car but keeps all the suspension geometry correct so that's that's the main benefit there with the suspension geometry and ride height now of course there's other benefits i was lucky enough to do some fea on this car with a friend of mine from the wrx club dave Benicki. and i guess i should talk a little bit about how i came up with this design because i'd never done anything like this before so, you know, it's a matter of reading books and talking to people who have done things like this, which I don't know anyone who's done this before. So. so yeah, I basically just came up with a design using some electrical conduit, a series of triangles, because that's what you want. You want triangles for the strength. And then once I was happy with my design and there was no clearance issues, we used a plumb bob to measure all the junctions in space. So just for half, you only need half because it's a mirror. So had all these coordinates in X, Y, Z, in space, gave that to Dave and he did the FEA, which is basically a method to determine how strong the tube chassis design is gonna be. Because you know, you don't really wanna, if you've never done anything like this before, you don't really just wanna weld it all together and send it without knowing that it's not gonna fold like a noodle. So Dave did the FEA, everything looked really good, and that gave me the confidence to go ahead and start welding everything together based on my design. Once that happened, we, well, I built the, the, the frame to the point that it could be bolted into the original frame rails in a higher position than, than standard. So all the pivot points moved up in the car and then it was a matter of basically joining the roll cage tubes from the main hoop down to the rear cradle. And then that basically locked everything into position. And then I was able to cut out the original frame rail and then add more tubes until I got to the final structure that you can see here.
So yeah, that's suspension geometry and ride height and just a bit on the weight reduction because that's actually a huge benefit of this design. In the factory car, all the loads go through the frame rails, which are part of the sheet metal. And in this design, all the suspension load goes into the roll cage. So basically the whole, what I'm saying is the whole back of the car does nothing now. You know, other than my tube chassis, all the sheet metal is doing nothing. All the loads are carried through the roll cage. So that basically means at some point in the future, I'm gonna cut the entire back off the car. Can't cut beyond the forward point of the rear wheel tubs under the rules but basically everything behind that is coming off and going to be replaced with composite so it's going to be an absolutely huge weight saving once I get to that stage. You can see I'm actually using the original Subaru control arm except for a couple of them which I had to make from scratch which is mostly this top one but I've replaced all the rubber bushings with rod ends or hind joints as some people call them so there's no basically everything solid now there's no there's not going to be any flex in the control arm so it should have a very direct feel now I know you can buy aftermarket control arms off the shelf but this was actually really cheap and really fun to make actually so part of this build is to keep the budget as low as possible and make as much stuff as I can myself if you just go out and buy all this stuff off the shelf it, you know, the, yeah, the cost adds up. I'm actually using the standard Subaru BRZ uh, differential, but I've allowed some adjustment in my cradle to change the height. It's all solid mounted, so no movement in the diff. And I guess in, in the future, I will upgrade the center to a clutch pack style center, just for more grip. But at the moment, it's still at the factory. Uh, I think it's a Torsen center. There is no shock absorber in there at the moment because I don't know corner weights and there's no point ordering springs and things until I get to that point, but I've just got a solid bit of metal holding the car up. It's designed to take the standard size coilover or shock in the back. And yeah, that, that pretty much covers the benefits of this design. It was a lot of work, obviously, but like I said, this is a ground up build. I wanted to do something different and it's just, it has been fun. So yeah, if you've got any questions about what I've done, drop them in the comment and I will try and reply to all of them. Cheers.